So today's video is going to be pretty short. Uh, we're going to simulate cloth. So I'm not going to have any intro. Let's get straight into it. So I have this character with the dress. Now this is a fully skeletal character. And at this point, well, the dress is animating with the character based on the character's weight paint and animations and all that stuff. So let's try to simulate the cloth so that it actually does float around like an actual cloth should rather than using this animation. So what we need is any skeletal mesh. This can be applied to any skeletal mesh. One thing though that is important is that uh, these things should have their own separate uh, materials. Otherwise, it's going to be very complicated uh, for you to actually do this. So in my situation, I have five materials. I have one for the body. So it's legs, arms, head, one for the hair, one for the shoes, one for the dress. And I think I have the one for the underwear as well. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that we enable the section selection and this was going to allow us to select these individual material pieces. So I'm going to select my dress in this one. I'm going to right click the dress and I'm going to create clothing data from se section. I'm going to call this dress. Let's hit create. Now by default sometimes this thing might not come up to you. The first time at least it did not come up for me. It was empty. So what I did was just save this, close it off, reopened it boom it was there now if you don't have the clothing tab just like any other tab you can enable it under the windows section and you have the clothing okay so we have the clothing data created let's now go ahead and right click this once more with it selected right click once more apply clothing data let's select our dress there we go so we are all good with this it's going to take a couple of seconds recompile the shaders we're not going to wait for that let's click the activate cloth paint now as you can see, nothing really changed. It still looks the same. Uh, that is because we need to select our clothing data. So let's select our dress and instantly you can see it turned pink. Now, if you're uh, a modeler and you know what is weight paint, this is going to be pretty much the same thing. Uh, so we are going to paint vertices on this model, which are going to be allowed to uh, simulate fully and partially and whatever, right? So. In our right side, we can adjust all of those settings. The first one is the brush size. I have way too big of a brush. I don't want to simulate the entire dress. Otherwise, it's going to give us some issues. So I'm going to go ahead and change the brush radius to like five. And we have the tool strength and the paint value is from zero up until 100. If we paint this at zero, it's going to turn pink like it is right now. And it's not going to simulate at all. It's going to stay static like it is well or bend with the animation. And if we change this to 100, it's going to ignore the animation and do its own thing, basically. So that's exactly what we are going to do. Paint this to a 100 value. So we can now go ahead and start painting this model. So I'm going to fully animate, well, fully, fully simulate the bottom lines, two bottom lines. I think the best part is to animate a little bit below the butt cheeks and not go above those. Otherwise, well, uh, the dress might fl fly too high and well, then we're gonna have partial nudity in our game and that's probably not what we want. So let's change our brush tool strength to 50 now. Now let's paint the next line. So I feel like that is the best way to do it. You simulate some of it fully and then you start simulating some parts a little bit less. So it's, it has like this nice transition in it. So let's do it like so. There we go. And I'm going to do another one with something like 20. So I maybe might be going a little bit too high on this one. But well, we're going to see. Um, my brush is too big. So I'm going to change this to 3. Bring this back down to 0. And I'm going to make sure I repaint these back. There we go. Okay, so that's seems to be all right. Let's go back to 20. And let's continue. Let's continue. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. This is a little tedious, but we got to do what we got to do. Okay, so uh, looks good to me. So let's go ahead and let's deactivate it. And instantly you will see something happening. As you can see, something did happen, but well, the dress is in a weird shape. We're going to fix that in a second. Let's first make sure that it actually does simulate. So now if we hit play and run around, you will see that it does actually work like an actual cloth. 
Now the issue with this now is the fact that, well, uh, the collisions are taking over and they are messing this whole thing up. So we got to make sure our collision shapes are exactly the same as our character model shape. So with any skeletal mesh, you should have a physics asset with it. So go ahead and open that one up. And here you have your collision capsules. So mine are very, very large as you can see. And well, because of them, this clothing is a little bit off. So I'm going to select one of those, scale it down. I'm going to make them pretty small at first. And then we are going to go ahead and adjust these to their correct sizings. But the first thing what I'm going to do is just simply scale these down and rotate them in their correct somewhat correct positions at least. I'm not going to bother too much with this specific model. So there we go. So that's the that. Let's go ahead, let's also scale this one down. Scale this one in. There we go. So I'm gonna make these a little, quite a bit smaller for now, but you will see me readjust these and make these bigger in a second. Okay, so that's that. Now we can go ahead and try this again and you will see that some of the parts are going to be sticking through the character. As you can see when we run, we have our legs going through. We can see the butt cheeks at some parts. We can see all kinds of partial nudity. Uh, and even if we are in somewhat of an idle state, we can still see the skin poking through the dress. And that is because, well, now our collisions are a little bit even too small. So we need to go ahead and adjust those to be the correct size. So you want to make sure that your uh, these capsules, collision capsules, are big enough. And what I like to do is actually go ahead and expand this until I can see the, the cloth starting to move out of the way. So I'm going to do something like this for this leg right here. And I'm going to do something very similar pretty much the same thing to the other one. So I see it starts moving. Okay, so that's gonna be a good position for me. I'm gonna do the same thing with the hips part as well. I'm going to move this out a little bit. Don't go too crazy on this one, but try to adjust this the best you can. There we go. So let's hit play again. And now you can see it is way better. If you're still, if your character is still has some issues with sticking uh, the, the skin sticking through the cloth, then go ahead and make your collisions a little bit bigger. But as you can see, mine does seem to be pretty all good. So I'm not really going to bother with adjusting this anymore. Now, but be careful with this. Like I said, don't make it too, don't make too high cloth simulation. Otherwise, well, you will have some partial nudity. As you can see, I'm on the edge of having one. But yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found this useful. You can do this. There's a lot of different applications for this. Obviously, you can simulate all kinds of capes and other different dresses and whatever, whatnot. And yeah, uh, thank you for watching. If you found this useful, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And I see you in the next one.